Hey guys, new disclaimer. I am not sure what's true or false in this video. I take gossip and tea from online, from magazines, from books, from word of mouth, from all over, and I ball it up together and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to the video. Hello, my beautiful and handsome Scandalites and Says So Squad. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. And today we are going to talk about the not quite queen of the screen, but she is to some people, Miss Tallulah Bankhead. Let's get to it. Tallulah Brockman Bankhead was born on January the 31st, 1902 in Huntsville, Alabama. Her father's name was William Brockman Bankhead, a politician, and her mother's name was Adelaide Eugenia Ada Bankhead. And Tallulah also had an older sister and her name was Evelyn Eugenia Bankhead. Now, Tallulah was born into a political family, so she was a true daughter of the South. Now, in saying that, I'm not saying that her family was this confederate and, you know, the South will rise again, even though I'm sure they loved the South. Her family was actually very democratic. Her father was a democratic politician, and they were not just liberal like today, but they certainly were not conservative, especially for that time. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all off top, Tallulah Bankhead is absolutely scandalous and messy and child she just is a wild free spirit but let me go ahead and sprinkle a little tea right here because see the messiness come from the family line child let me tell you about her parents honey baby don't you know that ada the mama was just a scandalous child listen the mama and the daddy wasn't even supposed to be together the mama actually lived in mississippi she came down to huntsville to buy a wedding dress because she was about to get married to a man in mississippi the child she walked in that doggone store and saw Tallulah's daddy looking good, all that money that he had and stuff. Her mama went on ahead and phoned home and told that man at home, uh, sir, the wedding is off and it's over. I done found my new man. Her and Tallulah's daddy ended up getting married soon after that. So you already know it's finna be messy because look what's going on. And let me sprinkle something else in here. If you're from Atlanta, Bankhead, go ahead and stand up because yes, this is where Bankhead gets his name from. I think it was Tallulah's great granddaddy or granddaddy or somebody like that, but just know the Bankhead name came from Tallulah Bankhead's family. Now, even though Tallulah grew up to do a whole bunch of scandalous and messy things, unfortunately, her mother would not witness this because her mother passed away three weeks after she gave birth to Tallulah when she developed sepsis. And it is said that Tallulah carried some guilt with her because of that, but get this though, Tallulah is not the only one that had that type of guilt. Her mother also had that type of guilt because Tallulah's maternal grandmother passed away giving birth to her mother. So it almost seemed like a family thing. But to get back to the story, like I was saying, it said that Tallulah may have felt some guilt and kind of acted out because of this, but she was not the only one that acted out. Her father, William, loved his wife. That was his boo. That was his baby. So when she passed away, William did not handle it well at all, and he started drinking. It's also claimed that he kind of shunned his daughters and pushed them away, and I'm not sure if he was doing this because he started to maybe not be able to care for his daughters because their mother had passed away, or if he blamed Tallulah or her sister, you know, for his wife passing away. I don't know what that was about, but I do know that he ended up sending his daughters to live with his mother. And so Tallulah and her sister were raised by their grandmother and these girls were terrible. I mean, child, they was bad, just getting into everything. And it's claimed the reason Tallulah acted out so bad is because she was supposedly very homely. She was overweight, she was not really that good looking, and you know, overweight back then just was not in, child. Thick folks like me would have been put in the ugly category. That's just the way it was back then. Y'all skinny folks, though, I guess y'all would have been it. Okay, I'm finished hating on the skinny folks, but since Tallulah was so homely and overweight, she would act out because her sister was very pretty, very thin, you know, had it all together, got all of the attention. So Tallulah had to get some attention somewhere, and they said that she would just act crazy. And they said that it would be spur of the moment. Like they said that sometimes she would put on a performance or a play for her family, you know, and she's just acting things out. And then suddenly in the middle of it, she's just like, ah, ah, dropping to the floor, uh, doing this and kicking her legs and stuff and just hollering and holding her breath until her face turned blue. And, child, they said the grandma was so shaken up and like, you know, Tallulah, calm down, Tallulah, calm down. She would go and take a bucket of cold water just to throw on Tallulah praying and hoping that her grandchild would calm down. But even though Tallulah's grandma had a line full of cold buckets of water lined up, child, it didn't help. 
it is said that Tallulah and her sister, the older they got, got worse and worse. And the grandmother finally threw her hands up and was like, hey, you know what? Son, you're going to have to come get your kids. I can't deal with these kids no more. These kids driving me crazy. And their father agreed. So the sisters were sent off to a convent in New York. And I believe around this time, Tallulah was around 10 or 11 years old, and they stayed at that convent for a little while. But soon, William's political career really started taking off. As a matter of fact, just to tell you a little bit about him, um, he ended up becoming Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States. So he really became big time in the political field. But at this moment in the story, it was just now taking off. It was growing. So he packed up his office and moved to Washington, D.C., and he took his girls from the convent in New York and brought them to Washington, D.C. DC with him. When they got to Washington DC, they went to several different schools and gossip says they acted a fool at every single one, especially Tallulah. And then things became even worse because around the age of 15 years old, Tallulah's aunt got in her ear and it was like, Tallulah, you know, why don't you lose some weight? Why don't you fix your hair up? Why don't you do things to make yourself feel better? And Tallulah took her advice. About a year later, Miss Bankhead stepped out and was looking straight fly. Ooh, child waist was snatched, you know what I'm saying? Just looking beautiful. And of course, when she's looking like that, the boys are harping on it. And baby, they said Tallulah was running all through them doggone boys. And the sad part about it is that it said that her sister Eugenia wasn't that much better. But see, the difference between Tallulah and Eugenia is that Eugenia was a true romantic. Eugenia was actually probably messing around with these boys to find a husband, not just to be doing it. And she actually did find a husband at the age of like 16, 17 years old, and she got married and after that she kept on getting husbands i mean it said that the girl was married about six or seven times throughout her lifetime so a true romantic like i said but miss tallulah marriage a child tallulah laughing your dog on face that girl one thing about no marriage she had just now became like this beautiful being and she was enjoying her little glow up tallulah started feeling like she was beautiful herself and she thought she was so beautiful that when the magazine picture play put out a contest for the most beautiful girl in the world tallulah submitted a picture of herself but see the thing is is that tallulah ain't asked her daddy tallulah ain't asked her grandma tallulah ain't asked no grown person at all this is what happens when young folks try to do stuff they don't know what they doing a child she gonna sit up there and send the picture ain't send no contact information or nothing no address people don't even know her name the magazine prints her picture and says hey this is the winner of the contest who is this girl and then Tallulah sitting up there scrambling trying to hurry up and send another picture with her address even her father sent another picture to the magazine with her address but the initial frenzy that surrounded her picture in that magazine had kind of wore off by the time the contact information made it to them now true enough she did still end up winning the trip to New York and she had like a small bit part in a movie but her real chance at what she could have got she missed it because she was trying to be grown and then left off the contact information. Through that whole magazine ordeal though Tallulah learned two things. She learned that she needed to be where the action was. She never wanted to miss a calling ever again and she also learned by having those bit parts in those movies that she wanted to act. This is what she wanted to do. So she packed up her bags and she moved to New York. And at this time, she's only about 15, 16, 17 years old, but it does not matter. Tallulah comes to New York and fits right in in because of her personality. She actually had a personality very similar to Billie Holiday. You talk to Tallulah Bankhead, your feelings might get hurt. But luckily for her, she was in the old time society and back then, sensitive did not exist. Everybody was cussing each other out, busting each other upside the head, and then having a beer afterwards. So like I said, she fits in very well when she goes to New York. And it's also around this time that it is believed that she had one of her first lesbian encounters or affairs. Because around this time, Tallulah was hanging out with a group of women that was believed to be lesbian and bisexual and their names were Estelle Winwood, Eva Le Gallien, and Blythe Daly. And Tallulah loved her circle of friends. They were together all the time, ate together, slept together, read together, whatever the case, they were always together. And also when she first started to hang around these women, you know, it probably was a few people that tried to warn her, you know what I'm saying, Tallulah, you probably don't know this, but them women like each other. Baby, you know what Tallulah started telling them? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 listen here. My daddy warned me about booze and my daddy warned me about men, but he ain't say nothing about women. Ah. I tried to do Meg Thee Stallion. Was that it? That sounded stupid, didn't it? Let's move on. 
So anyways, Tallulah had no qualms about letting people know that she liked women. She was not apologetic for it. And she also was way more outspoken than even the women that she was hanging around. Now these women probably were not just covering up the fact that they were lesbian or bisexual, but they certainly were not doing what Tallulah Bankhead was doing. Tallulah was walking up to folks talking about some, hi, I'm lesbian, how are you doing? And the folks would be like, uh, okay, I guess, I don't. I don't know how to take this. I mean, the woman was just wild like that. So anyways, Tallulah is with her group of friends and she parades around New York for a hot minute looking for fame, but it eludes her every time. And then suddenly she picks up her bags and she goes to Britain. And I believe this happened around 1922. And when she does move to Britain, she does finally get her fame, but this is on stage, not on film. Even though it's on stage, Tallulah loves it and she absolutely blows the audience away. Because over in Great Britain, everybody is strict, you know, they got classes and rules, and Tallulah gets over there and just acts insane. Like if she forgets a line, Tallulah just start turning cartwheel or rip the wig off her head and just, yeah. And so people will be like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. It makes them giddy because she's breaking the rules, even if it's in a play. So Tallulah Bankhead was definitely, definitely a delight for the British people. But sooner or later, some of them, their delight turned into disgust because see, they found out that little Tallulah was running through they sons like it wasn't nothing. Ooh, child. Tallulah would make her way over to Eden, a public boarding house school for boys, and she would have those boys love sick. You know, she's sleeping with one of them. He think they in love. Next night, she's sleeping with his homeboy, just starting all kind of ruckus. And I told you guys, back at this time, especially in Britain, everything was upright and straight, and as a lady, you did not behave like this. So people were horrified that this woman was over here taking more D's than a report card. It got so bad that M my five, basically the equivalent of the FBI over here, started spying on Tallulah child. Yes, that's how much of a ruckus Tallulah Bankhead was causing with these boys. And then MI5 found out that not only was she messing with everybody's sons, but also that she was a lesbian. Child, it got even worse. So although Tallulah stayed in Great Britain for a little while, after dealing with that and also understanding that she wanted to be on film, she wanted to be a superstar actress on the big screen, she moved to Hollywood to try to pursue that part of her career. And just to go ahead and sum up her career, she was set up and built up and posed to be a big time superstar like Greta Garbo, Marlena Dietrich. She was posed to be that, but it just never really happened for her. Now she did get some good movies and sometimes blockbusters, you know, but she just never could be a lasting presence on the screen. But that does not mean anything. Tallulah Bankhead is still legendary for all of the mess and scandalousness that she had going on. Baby, let me tell you something. It's said that when she did finally get a movie, The Devil in the Deep in 1932, Tallulah was running around telling anybody who would listen, darling, the only reason I took that movie role was to the divine Gary Cooper. And people would be like, ain't nobody ask you that? And if you thought she acted up in public or at the movie sets, when it came down to in her own home, you may as well forget it. She used to throw these massive parties and these parties were called No Boundaries Party. That if you were somebody who was sensitive or got your feelings hurt and all that kind of stuff, you could not come to her party, honey. You cannot sit with her. It would get wild right off the bat. It is said that Tallulah once threw a party and you know, as soon as everybody came through the door, everybody's just standing around chatting and Tallulah jumps up and says, hey, I got an idea everybody. Let's play Now You See It, Now You Don't. And all the party guests are like, ooh, good, yes, this is gonna be fun. And Tallulah suddenly starts turning cartwheels all around the room. And so the party guests are like, what, what is wrong with this woman? And while they're talking amongst each other, somebody's like, ah! And baby, come to find out it is Tallulah Bankhead's stuff. She has on a long skirt and every time she goes upside down, it's falling over her head. And this woman ain't got on nobody's panties. I mean, TT and Booster just out for everybody to see. And that's not even the half of it. Tallulah Bankhead was a notorious nudist. She was a notorious nudist. She always wanted to be naked wherever she went, but especially in her own home. Baby, there have been many stories that have been said where she would have these parties. People are walking through the door. There's the music. Doom, 
They walked to the front room to Lula out there doing the Charleston with no clothes on. Just And it's funny when you think about it because you know the Charleston and the cakewalk and all those dances like that. That's a lot of bouncing and jumping and stuff. And I'm sure her booster was flopping everywhere. <laughs> I'm sure that girl Booster was flopping everywhere. But her nakedness and nudism was not reserved to her home. It was nothing to see Tallulah Bankhead anywhere without any clothes on. And even though sometimes she wouldn't be fully naked, she definitely would walk around with just like one piece of clothing on. Like it was nothing to see Tallulah Bankhead walking around with a button down dress shirt, makeup, hair done and everything. Just walking up to folks, hi Hank, how are you? And then Hank looked down and says, Ugh, I'm doing better now, toots. And of course, I don't know if Hank said that. Heck, I don't even know if the man's name was Hank. But y'all catch my drift. I'm sure that was happening. And then, get this, get this. Not only was she running around with no clothes on and stuff, she was also pooting and stuff. And said that one time somebody asked her, was like, Tallulah, is that you? Did you pass gas? Talking about she gonna say, uh, yeah, I pass gas. I hope y'all don't think I smell like that all the time. <laughs> and let me tell you something being nude and naked was not for no reason honey she definitely was showing off the goodies baby Tallulah Bankhead was a freak nasty one to know can you get down low she was betting women and men left and right and when people found out about it especially men everybody wanted a turn but of course back then men were classy you know they had a lot of chivalry they were gentlemen so they approached her in the very wine and dine type of way but what they didn't know is that they were doing it all wrong so little bankhead wanted a man to come up in her ear and tell her hey little shorty let me whisper in your ear tell you something you know what i'm saying she was into that type of stuff and chico marks was her man. Baby said that Tallulah was on set with Groucho and then they ran into his brother Chico. And you know what Chico said straight up without batting the eye? Ah, Tallulah my darling. I want to you. And Tallulah little hot tail turned right around and told him and so you shall you old fashioned boy. So you shall. But listen to this though. See, that didn't work for everybody because see, it's one rumor out there about a man that was in the elevator with her and he was drunk. And he gonna turn around and look at Tallulah and say, I sure wouldn't mind if I had a little. And you know, he was glad after he said it too because I'm pretty sure he had heard that this direct approach is what got men laid with Tallulah Banky. You know, so he just thought he was doing it, child. Baby, Tallulah turned around and looked at him and told him, you wish you had a little right me too because i got a big old big one i wish i had a little one too good night sir and walked on out and child let me go ahead and tell y'all this tea baby she wasn't lying about a big old she was not lying but that's gonna come up in a minute when i tell y'all another story listen to what she did to joan crawford now gossip says Tallulah and joan did not really like each other they couldn't stand each other and joan at this time thought she was queen b because see she had hooked that famous fish remember when i told y'all in her video she had hooked the one baby remember who i was talking about douglas fairbanks the prince of hollywood okay so joan and douglas are married all right and Joan already knows that her and Tallulah don't really get along. But Tallulah throws one of her parties and everybody is invited. So Joan is like, <laughs> let me step in with my new boo and show out up in here. And Joan shows up clean. You hear me? She is dressed to the nines. She has her handsome husband on her arm. Joan also has all this golden glitter in her hair. Just being Joan Crawford, you know what I'm saying. And also, I think Joan was trying to be messy too because when she came with that gold glitter, glitter in her hair pretty much everywhere she went she was dropping glitter all over Tallulah's couches all over the floor kind of making a little mess it wasn't just terrible but definitely dropping gold flakes everywhere and immediately when Joan and Douglas walked through the door Tallulah Bankhead was like uh I know you lying no she didn't sit up there and come up in my house trying to look GQ with her little man and all this gold mess in her hair don't worry about it I got something for your tail and with that she took off walking right up to Joan shoulders going y'all know how it is soon as she got to Joan she gonna say just wanted you to know dear I've slept with your husband already and you'll be next and with that she threw them shoulders back and sashayed on down the hallway Joan Crawford was furious she couldn't even get a word in because Tallulah was already gone you know what I'm saying she said her little piece but even after that incident 
incident, Joan and Douglas didn't just turn around and leave. They still stayed at the party a little while longer, probably because Joan was just like letting Tallulah know like, I'm still in your house. But while Joan thought she was winning the battle by staying in Tallulah's house, she had no idea that Tallulah had set up her statement of I had your husband and you'll be next. She set that statement up for a major punchline and as soon as Joan and Douglas walked out of the door and got to their car Tallulah came back in front of all of the guests and was like hey everybody hey everybody Joan them gone and they was like yeah she gone and everybody came and gathered around and Tallulah was like and look where Joan's been and she was pointing to different spots where gold glitter had fell okay and she pointed to her couch you know she pointed to the kitchen table just all kind of stuff like look where look where Joan being she been walking around my house doing all this kind of stuff and everybody's like mm Mm -mm -mm. And then suddenly Tallulah lifts up her dress and says, look where Joan has been and got some gold flakes in her pubic hair. And this, is, and this is hilarious and kind of disgusting, but the reason it's so clever is because earlier she told Joan, I've had your husband and I'll be having you soon. And then pretty much made it set up like she did end up having Joan. And it said that back at that time, everybody got a big kick out of the joke. So as you can see, Tallulah Bankhead's mouth and behavior was a lot. And the thing is, Tallulah would say this type of stuff anywhere. It did not matter if she was doing an interview. It did not matter if she was on the set of the movie in the public. It did not matter. And y'all know who was sitting up there watching and waiting, honey. Will H. Hayes and his little Hayes Code. And just to tell you what the Hayes Code is, it was just a big censor thing that they put on actors and actresses. You can't say this. You can't do this. You can't dress this way. All different type of stuff. So because Will H. Hayes was watching and waiting and frowned up in the face and, ooh, I can't believe she said that, Tallulah ended up being added to his Hayes Code Doom book. And when she was, everybody was like, oh my gosh, oh no, Tallulah, you've been added to the Doom book. I'm so sorry, dear. And you know what Tallulah said about it? I don't give a F. F Hayes, that little prick. So obviously she stayed in the Doom book. So it's pretty much established that Tallulah Bankhead is going to do what Tallulah Bankhead wants to do. And so since that is the case, now it's time to get to some heavy, heavy tea. The scandal child the scandal. Baby, it is said that Tallulah Bankhead could not resist a beautiful black woman, honey. And I ain't talking about no just no, ooh, she's pretty. No, I'm talking about it is said that Tallulah Bankhead had a deep, serious, heated passion for beautiful black women. Child, these folks is out here talking about her passion will beat out a white man and a black man's passion for a black woman. Think of how a black man today will approach you. What's up, little mama? How you doing? That is Tallulah Bankhead. That is what they said Tallulah Bankhead was doing to black women back then. She was straight up approaching black women like, you know, sis, you looking good. I mean, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to say. That's what she was doing though. So imagine this walking up to you, you know, approaching you with all this swag. And what y'all was gonna do about it? I don't know, girl. I don't know. Mm, I don't know, Tallulah. And I'm sorry, Hattie McDaniel fans. I'm so sorry. Because in that community post, y'all thought I was meaning a Hattie McDaniel video. But no, honey, I'm sorry. This is about Hattie McDaniel getting bagged up by Tallulah Bankhead. Baby Gossip says Tallulah had Hattie all up and through that doggone bedroom with her legs cocked up to the back. There was a little scissor action going on as well, child. And listen to this. It ain't rumored to just happen just one time. They said that Hattie went back there with that white woman several times. And they said it was because Tallulah Bankhead was the bizum at what she did. And don't get it twisted. Apparently Tallulah wasn't the only one eating snacks back there. Child, they said Hattie popped a few snacks in her mouth too. Child, I done told y'all the tea gets scalding hot. But get this though. The thing is, Hattie is not the only queen that Miss Tallulah Bankhead messed with. She also was rumored to have a relationship with Miss Billie Holiday. And honey, let me tell you, Billie Holiday ought to be ashamed for the stuff she put on that woman. Said Tallulah started following Billie Holiday around, writing the letters, calling, trying to get in touch with her. Even said one night Tallulah Bankhead pulled up on Billie Holiday while Billie Holiday was at a club. Walks in the club and she sees Billie Holiday hugged up a little too close to another woman. And it's rumored that Tallulah was like, look at her, hugged up all over that B. 
like, you know, ready to go over there and fight. And I mean, this is really crazy because nobody has reported whether this club was a white club or black club or what. But can you imagine if this was a black club and Tallulah then walked up in there with her fur, you know, the only white woman. She come in there all huffing and puffing and then she see Billy and she shouts out, look at her, hugged up all over that bee, ready to go fight that woman. Tallulah Bankhead was a beast. Tallulah was so in love with Billie Holiday that it is claimed that she wrote letters to J. Edgar Hoover telling him, hey, can you please drop the charges against Billie Holiday? Can you please stop chasing her, stop pursuing her, please? And the thing is, is that Tallulah wasn't just writing just to be writing. She actually had this kind of power. I told you that her father was real big in the politician game, speak of the house, all that kind of stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? It really could have been done, but she underestimated J. Edgar Hoover's drive to lock Billie Holiday up. And so he responded with some stuff like, you know, oh, I would, Tallulah, but you know, it's just out of my hands. It's, it's the case has gone too far up and all this kind of stuff. So it ended up not being able to help Billie, but that just shows you how much Tallulah loved her Billie. But the thing is, for all the love and passion that they shared, their relationship ended up ending abruptly and badly. And it was all because Billie Holiday started to write her book, her autobiography. That when Tallulah heard about it, she basically cut off contact with Billie. You know what I mean? She didn't want her name to be put in the memoir. And this time it was Billie who found herself chasing after Tallulah. She found herself calling Tallulah and being told, hey, Miss Bankhead is not here and all this good stuff. It got so bad that Billie even wrote a letter to Tallulah. And I don't know exactly what the letter said, but I'm gonna try to find a picture and put it up here on this video. But I know it said something to the effect of, Tallulah, why are you avoiding me? You got your double answering the phone, talking about you ain't there right now and all of that good stuff. Like you don't wanna talk to me, you're ignoring me. Look at here, Banky. If I wanted to drag you in my book, baby, I would have dragged you. But that was never my plan. I never wanted to drag you. So the way that you're acting right now is real funny and real messy because I never was gonna drag you in my book. But even after Billy sent this letter, I didn't find any more record of them ever conversing with each other again. Now let's get to a little more tea. We've already discussed how Tallulah's sex life is just like over the top. You know what I'm saying? She really gets around out here. She does what she wants to do. Well, don't let her find a drought on a man. I'm not sure about a woman how she feels about that, but I know on a man, baby, do not let her go on a drought because Tallulah is going to act out. Do you hear me? One time she was so desperate and mad and acting out, she went to a magazine and did an interview in the magazine. And in the interview, she said something like, uh, it's been six months since I had a man. Six months since I had an affair. That's six months too long. I want a man. I want a man. And her daddy was furious. He was completely embarrassed that his daughter was out here begging Thomas she wanted a man to bed her and stuff like this. You know, he just was like, oh my goodness. And this was a small magazine that she said it in, but Time got a hold to her statements. Time magazine, the huge magazine. They printed her statements in Time magazine. And that is when Tallulah phoned her dad in tears and told her dad, Daddy, I won't never do any more interviews ever again. I'm sorry. But just because she stopped saying crude stuff to the magazines does not mean she stopped being crude, period. You have the rumor about when she went to St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City on New Year's Eve. Tallulah walked in there. She went up to the railing and kneeled on her knees to take the communion. And while she was still kneeling, she looked up to the Jesus statue that was in front of her. And this Jesus statue was one, you know, where he was crying and the blood, you know, he's nailed to the cross one of those type of statues of Jesus all right so Tallulah is looking at it and then all of a sudden she starts talking to it and she says Jesus Jesus smile darling it's your birthday in the church with folks in there baby I know that priest like to drop his Bible on the floor and I'm pretty sure the folks in the congregation probably doomed that woman to all kind of hells child and then there's more tea about her being messy and another one of her feuds it is said that she had a running feud with Miss Betty Davis so rumor has it Betty Davis had said something derogatory about Tallulah and I guess it started getting around and so when the rumor got back to Tallulah somebody came up to her and was like Tallulah Betty said this about you Betty said and Tallulah was like ah heard what she said and as soon as I see her I'm gonna drag every hair off of her and she paused and everybody is like you know just waiting ready for her to say head 
This girl gonna say mustache. Everybody was tickled to death. Everybody was laughing. Let me tell you about another messy outburst that Tallulah had. So apparently she went to the wedding of some famous couple. I'm sorry, I don't have any names for you guys. And Tallulah was in the congregation sitting there. Suddenly, she yells out, Child, these folks ain't about nothing. I done had both of them, the wife and the groom. And it ain't a good F to be found in between them. So, you know, I don't even know what the fuss about. Embarrassing the heck out of the bride and groom. Tallulah Bankhead is definitely one of those people where you probably wouldn't even just want to even deal with her. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all's business was going to be put out on the street. Sooner or later though, out of all this fun Tallulah is having and everything that she is doing, things start to catch up with her. And one morning she wakes up with a severe, very bad stomach pain. And it's so bad that some rumors even say she fainted from the pain. So she was taken to the hospital. And everybody in the hospital thought that she may have had a stomach tumor. They didn't really know what was wrong. So they immediately started drawing blood and running tests. And then one of the doctors ended up coming back in and letting her know, no ma'am, you don't have a stomach tumor. And he tells her, ma'am, you have a severe case of gonorrhea. It was true. Her stomach was hurting because her gonorrhea case was so severe, it was ravaging her insides. It was eating up her insides. It was so bad, Tallulah Bankhead almost died from this gonorrhea infection. So she ended up having to have surgery. She had to have a hysterectomy just to try to repair some of the damage and stop it from damaging something even further. Now, it's rumored that George Raft is the actor that actually gave Tallulah Bankhead this case of gonorrhea but to be honest with you with her history it really probably ain't no telling what happened whoever ended up giving her the disease like i said it almost killed her and so she ended up having the hysterectomy and she had to stay in the hospital for a little while on the day that she was finally released and her handlers came in to get her Tallulah was being wheeled out of the room and she turned around and looked at the doctor and said hey doctor don't think this has taught me a lesson Meaning she was still finna go out there and do what she wanted to do. Now by the year of 1937, I suppose Tallulah was just ready to settle down. I guess she felt like, hey, you know, I didn't taste the rainbow many times. I want to get married. So she did end up marrying a man named John Emery on August the 31st, 1937. And unfortunately, they ended up divorcing in May of 1941. Now I'm not sure exactly what caused the divorce, but with stuff like what I'm just about to tell y'all right now, I can kind of see why they divorced. Baby child, listen to this mess here. So Tallulah Bankhead and her husband John are just at home chilling. John ends up falling asleep, okay? While he is asleep, Tallulah sneaks her little behind to the phone, gets on the phone and calls Vincent Price. And she tells him, Vincent, come on over, come on over, he's asleep, come over right now. And so Vincent is like, okay, I'll be there in a minute. So Vincent comes over to the house. Tallulah opens up the door and she's shh. And so Vincent is like, okay, yeah, cool. And Tallulah takes him by the hand and she walks him into the bedroom and sits him down right beside her sleeping husband. And honey, it's about to get messy right here. This to me is some of the messiest tea in the video. So after she sits Vincent Price down and they're being all quiet, she ends up unzipping his pants. And when she does, Vincent Price goes to work. He's just working the neck, working the neck, working the neck. Because the pants that Tallulah unzipped were her husband's pants. And Vincent Price was working the neck on her husband. Boom, child, the T. Do you hear me? Baby, Tallulah Bankhead has invited this other man to come into her home to do things to her husband while her husband is asleep. And it is said that while it was happening, her husband woke up, you know, because he's enjoying what's going on. Child, he looked down and saw Vincent and got the shock of his life. And so her husband is like, ah, Tallulah. And he looks over to her and she gonna say, oh, hush, darling, let him finish. When I tried to do it to you the other day, I got a lockjaw. 
These are the stories that are out about Tallulah Bankhead. She overstepped her boundaries 24-7. And I don't know what happened with the rest of that story, but I'm guessing her husband laid down and let Vincent finish doing throaty boaty. You know, I don't know, child. So although we haven't talked in detail about Tallulah's career, like I told you before, she didn't really blow up on the big screen like she wanted to, but because of the way she was, people still were interested in her. And this gave her a chance to be on the Lucy and Desi comedy hour. And by this time, she was in her 40s or 50s, but she was still very much Tallulah Bankhead. And one of the features of Tallulah Bankhead is that she was a nudist. Like I told you before, she didn't mind getting naked. And this was the first strike when it came to her being on the Lucy show because it is said Lucy as well as her I Love Lucy co-star Vivian Vance were on the set and I'm not really sure why Vivian Vance was on the set of the Lucy and Desi comedy hour I don't know what that was about unless I'm getting two rumors and mixing them together I'm not sure but anyways that's not the important part let me tell you what happened so Tallulah shows up and Lucy is like oh I love your shirt Tallulah and right after Lucy says this Vivian Vance supposedly was like and I don't like those pants I love those immediately after they say this Tallulah starts taking off her shirt and hands it to Lucy and is like here you go you can have it and then looked at Vivian Vance straight in the eye pulled down her pants and was like here you go you can have these Vivian y'all can have it I don't mind and Vivian Vance said her face dropped when she saw what she saw because she said that when Tallulah pulled off her pants she did not have any undies and Vivian said that her stuff was hanging out to her knees child I mean what is going on I have heard of some big stuffs before and stuff like that I ain't never heard of no woman stuff hanging down to their knees, though. Now, that's got to be over-exaggerated, but this is the rumor of what Vivian Vance said. But anyways, no matter how crazy that story is, that's not even the worst thing. The worst thing that was happening when Tallulah was on the Lucy show is that Tallulah was drinking. She, like I said, was in her 40s and 50s. She didn't give a dog on when nobody said Tallulah was going to do what Tallulah wanted to do. And she was drinking at rehearsal. She was forgetting her lines. She was just being sloppy. And Lucy, who was a perfectionist and was very professional, was not having this. Lucy was very ticked off about this. So one time it supposedly got real bad because because they were in rehearsal and Tallulah had forgot her lines and said Lucy came up to her and was saying the lines like let's say the line is um I see you over there so Tallulah has forgotten that line right this Lucy I see you over there remember it I see you over in Tallulah's face baby said it took everything in Tallulah's power not to swing on Lucy you heard what I'm saying so Tallulah was like I can't take this and she ended up walking off the set and from then on it is said that they did a lot of bickering and battling you know in every rehearsal but finally it came to the big night for the show to film and it is said that Tallulah Bankhead walked out on that stage and did flawlessly said that she hit every line on the mark and also that the crowd loved her because she was on a stage you know what I'm saying even though it was filmed this wasn't really a movie where she had to stay on the script line like that like this was a comedy hour so she kind of could step off the script a little bit and Tallulah did what Tallulah does in situations like that like she's always wild on the stage when she could be free so the audience absolutely loved her personality now the next show that Tallulah supposedly went on did not go so well and Gossip says this was the Loretta Young show and I'm not really sure what Loretta Young did on her show but it said that on her show Loretta Young was like very prudish you know what I'm saying she was a good girl you know Jesus God just didn't curse didn't all this kind of stuff I'm not sure why Tallulah even went on this show in the first place, but she did. And what happens is that Loretta Young, she would tell her guests, all right, anytime you curse, you got to drop a quarter in the jar. And so Tallulah is out there, and I'm guessing she kept cursing and kept slipping up, so she kept having to drop quarters in the jar. And then finally, Tallulah had enough, child. She reached in her pocket and pulled out a $20 bill and stuffed it in the jar and said, F you, Loretta Young, you big c***.
So now in time, as Tallulah got older, her career really, really started to slow down. And I think at one point she did have a show of her own, like the Tallulah Bankhead show. And she was kind of just doing comedy stuff, really just being Tallulah because people liked the way that she acted. But that show really did not last a long time. But it really didn't matter too much because Tallulah had built up a fan base and most of her fan base were gay males. They loved Tallulah Bankhead. They loved her swag and the way she walked and the way she dressed and they mostly loved the way that she always said darling. Whenever you hear that as a matter of fact if you hear people say darling that is Tallulah Bankhead. That's where that catchphrase or whatever it is that's where that comes from okay. So the gay men loved it. They absolutely worshiped Tallulah Bankhead. But y'all listen to this. Here come a little bit more tea and rumor. Don't you know it said that Tallulah Bankhead was actually with them gay men. Like she was cool with them and stuff. But whenever she saw one that was fine or good looking. Why are these folks out here saying that Tallulah was trying to turn them men out? It is said that when she saw a gay man that she was attracted to. She would lift up her uh, skirt and kind of like hunch at him. And then pop her panties. Like you know what I'm saying? Basically letting him know. You know I don't care how gay you is. You can't resist this can't no man resist this so you might as well come on and get this you don't want it you don't want it you know stuff like that and the gay man probably had run away but outside of Tallulah getting older and trying to turn gay men or whatever she was doing the cracks were really starting to show just with Tallulah Bankhead anyway she had been drinking and drugging this whole time okay let's not get it twisted Tallulah ain't just out here acting a fool and nothing else Tallulah has been doing all type of stuff especially with the drinking and the drugging and so since she is doing all this drinking and all of this smoking and she She's getting older she's really getting skinnier and you know she's not eating right and she's falling asleep here and there and there's this one tale about her falling asleep that is absolutely horrendous so Tallulah's assistant or handler comes to her house okay he's knocking on the door and there's no answer but he comes in and when he comes in he notices that Tallulah's dog whose name is Dolores is not running up to his feet like it usually does so he's calling out like Tallulah Tallulah he walks in the bedroom and he sees Tallulah sleep on the bed and she sleep like this okay she's laying this her head is on the pillow but her hand is like this and her hand is just barely touching her dog well in her hand and there was a cigarette butt so when the assistant comes in the dog is on fire child Tallulah then sat up there and set the dog on fire the dog just burning up and the assistant is like oh my gosh Dolores Dolores Tallulah wake up Dolores is on fire here go Tallulah what Dolores is on fire well put her out shoo immediately falls back to sleep like that's just how bad Tallulah Bankhead was gone and then there is another rumor out there that shows how much she did not care as she got older it is said that at one time Lady Eleanor Roosevelt came to visit Tallulah Bankhead you know and actually I don't know if this happened when she was older or younger but whatever the case supposedly Eleanor Roosevelt came to visit Tallulah Bankhead Eleanor Roosevelt gets in the house she's talking to Tallulah Bankhead and Tallulah in the middle of the conversation says excuse me excuse me Tallulah walks into another door that is in the room and leaves the door crack and all Eleanor Roosevelt can hear is like bloop bloop because it said that Tallulah was in there peeing and taking a boo-boo and had the nerve to have the door cracked so she can still carry on a conversation with Eleanor Roosevelt it is also rumored that when she got older that she started kind of being mean to her maids like she would start kind of like slapping them around and pushing them and stuff uh basically mad at them because they didn't have her joints rolled right and joints is that the right word because last time I said blunt y'all got on to me so is it joints for back then I don't know but anyways the maids wouldn't have them rolled right or they wouldn't have it rolled at all and Tallulah would be slapping them folks child busting them folks upside the head it got so bad one time that a maid took her to court so clearly you guys can see from what I just told you that Tallulah she was still very fun don't get me wrong she was still very fun she still said what she wanted to say I think she did start feeling some type of way because you know she started to age her skin started to get really wrinkled it's just the thing she did was taking a toll on her body and she would tell anybody 
somebody, you know, like I really can't even do nothing for myself anymore. I'm look as old as Jesus' is wet nurse. Like I look terrible. And these are things that she reportedly actually said. So I'm not just being funny. It's rumored that she actually said these things. But anyways, in 1964, she did her last interview. She was 62 years old. And it said that on that interview, she was breathing really heavily. Like she couldn't even catch her breath. It was kind of like, <gasps> because she was suffering from emphysema. And then in 1965, she made her last film. And that was a British horror film. And it was called Fanatic. And what they were trying to do was repeat the success of uh, Sweet Baby Jane or whatever. You know that movie with Betty Davis? They were trying to recreate that, but... Fanatic did not do well at the box office. And then on December the 12th, 1968, at the age of 66, the very wild, scandalous, and just, woo, child, life of Tallulah Bankhead came to an end. And her cause of death was plural, double pneumonia, complicated by emphysema. But get this though, the Tallulah that everybody knew and loved could not leave this world without a bang, child. So it is claimed that before she died, her last words were holding bourbon. Oh, and let me tell y'all this too. It is said that when Tallulah would be questioned about, you know, her sex life or what she likes, she would call herself ambisextrious, you know, like ambidextrous. And that's pretty cool, but I don't know if she was like saying that as being catchy or if she was saying that because the word bisexual did not exist back then or did it exist? I don't know. Y'all got to tell me that in the comments. And now we have gotten to the end of the old Hollywood scandal for Miss Tallulah Bankhead. I love you guys so much. And for the brand new subscribers, welcome to the family child. We are all family here and we are the Sesso Squad and we are the Scandalites. Love you guys so much. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.